being here with all of you. It's always a joy to me anytime I can come and preach here or worship with you guys. I just, I feel like I'm at home. You know, y'all have always made me feel at home, and I love each and every one of you. Um, I can go ahead and tell you all the that I'm going to be going all all through the, the word today, but um, we are going to, um, we're going to start, if you want to go ahead and turn in your Bibles to um, Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 1, I am going to start there. called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey. Take neither staves nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now, and I thank you so very much to be able to come and share your word today here at Berea Advent Christian Church. And Father, I pray that you will just hide me behind the cross. Yes. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Speak through me this day. Yes. Give me the words to say. And give each and every person who can hear the sound of my voice today the ears to hear. Open up their hearts and minds and Allow them to receive what you have for them in this yes, message. God. Father, I pray that you just be with all those who can't be here with us today, whether they are sick, like my dad, or like <coughs> uh, Renee, and all those on the prayer list who are sick this morning. Just heal them, Father, and we pray that your will be done in each and every one of those situations. Yes, God. Father, we thank you for the freedom that we still have for this time to be able to come together and worship you freely and openly and to learn <coughs> everything from cover to cover in your word and then go and share the gospel with us. Yes, God. That's right. Father, I thank you first, last, and foremost for Jesus Christ, Amen. for sending your Son to be born as a human, to take on this mortal, wicked flesh, and yes. then die the worst death possible on the cross. Yes. And then thank you, Father, for raising him again days later we thank you that we 
through Christ each have the ability to have the free gift that is salvation. And we love you and we ask all these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. 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 We're going to talk today about I've been doing a series in both the on both the remnant report each week and in service on Fridays on the doctrine of Christ. Although today I'm not going to be speaking only on the doctrine of Christ or specifically on the doctrine of Christ, I am going to stay along those same lines and absolutely everything that I will say here today will definitely be found in the doctrine of Christ. Uh, we're going to talk about the commission that was to the 12 first and then the 70 after and then to the whole <coughs> church. Uh, we know that, of course, Jesus had his 12 disciples that he taught and they followed him everywhere. But the Great Commission, which is what episode two in the Remnant Report, the Doctrine of Christ series was on, was the Great Commission. Thursday's program was on the Great Commission. Well, in the same manner, we're going to be talking today about the commission that was given to the 12 and then the 70 and then to the whole church. You see, Jesus didn't just give this power and authority to the 12 or the 70, but eventually the whole church. And Jesus gave us power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And that wasn't just for the 12. That was also for us. And I know for me, for the longest time, I wondered, what does that mean? Well, when you realize what we as believers have to deal with, non-believers don't deal with this near as much because they, until you're born again, the enemy doesn't, uh, he's already got you. You know, he may uh, mm -hmm. come, come against you, send demons your way, whatever, if the Lord is working with you to try to, to try to stop that from happening. But it is believers. It's us who are attacked on some of us on a daily basis. That's right. The last time I was here, I spoke on Ephesians 6, spiritual warfare. Today is, uh, you know, kind of the same thing um, because it's it's all got to do with one another. Friend, we are living in a day and age where not only can we literally see prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes daily, but we're living in a day and time to where in a matter of years or months or even weeks because we don't know how close we, we'd like to believe that uh, President Trump will stay in office but you know we don't know the, the elections are this year so we are living in a time to where it could become illegal to come together freely openly That's right. to worship like we're doing today Yep. Preaching the gospel will not always be something that we can do openly. And one thing I want to show today is when Jesus told his disciples to go out, when he told the twelve, you know, he told them to go here in, uh, in Luke, let's see, where was that? Chapter 9 and verse 1. He, uh, he told them to, to go in to the cities, and if they didn't receive him to, to 
shake the, the dust off their feet. But That's right. in this day and age, we have to know when to do that and when not to. Mm -hmm. Yes, we plant seeds, certainly. And we're not always, the people aren't always going to receive those seeds. That's why it's always important to share the gospel with people as much as you can. And if in nothing else, just by the way we live, they should be able That's to see right. Jesus Christ through yep. us. And we can't be so quick to shake the dust off our feet as the disciples were. Um, you know, th th there was a reason that they were told to shake the dust off their feet because the gospel was to the Jew first and then the Gentiles. Well, Jesus, you know, Jesus being God, he was the word, the word made flesh. So he knew that the Jewish people were not going to accept him. He knew that they were going to uh, be caused to be blind and deaf and that through the Gentiles that would accept him, then all of Israel being because of all the world would be saved because the gospel would then be preached throughout the world. And even today, you know, we, we are supposed to spread the word even to Jewish people. There is this. Um, myth that is pretty unfortunately in some pulpits that if you are of Jewish descent, if you have Jewish blood in your body, then you don't need Jesus Christ. You're, you can go to heaven anyway. And that's, that's mm -hmm. sad and it's a lie straight from the pits of hell. That's right. If you do not have Jesus Christ, if you have not been born again, friends, then you are not going to to the Father. He is the only way to the Father. So we have an obligation to the entire world. And, you know, I, um, I watched a sermon by a guy by the name of uh, T.L. Osborne. He was an evangelist. And he said that as the church, that our greatest, our greatest task, our supreme task, was to evangelize the entire world. And you know, I like to take that just a little bit further. Um, as impossible of a task as it is to evangelize the whole world, the church is the greatest power on the face of the whole earth. Because, and when I say the church, I'm not talking about any building, any denomination. I'm talking about the remnant. Every man, woman, and child who is born again and in the body of Christ. And I talked about the last Sunday as well. Uh, you know, Jesus told, uh, told his disciples that they were going to receive the comforter, that the comforter was going to come and that greater things than even he did. Well, wow. the only way that we can do greater things and evangelize the whole world is as one body, as the body of Christ. Now, if you remember, back in the Old Testament, in the book of uh, Kings, you had Jezebel trying her best to kill Elijah. And she was probably the, the biggest threat to all of the saints of, the God, of God the Father. You know, the old, in the Old Testament, Jezebel <coughs> killed many prophets. She yeah. had them kill uh, hundreds of them. Uh, there was a, a school of prophets in, in Elijah's time, and she killed the entire school of prophets, save a few that were able to escape because they were pre-warned. And eventually, you know, uh, Elijah, you know, you talk about a man of God. 
Mm. Elijah was just broken, defeated. He comes to God and says, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but that Jezebel has killed all of your prophets, and now she seeks my head also. You know, all every all the men and women in in Judea and in in Judah and in Israel bow their knees to Baal, worship Asherah, and the father told him, "No." I still have a remnant in Israel. There are 7,000 who have not bowed their knees to Baal. Hmm. And the same is true today. That's right. We've got churches all over. Small town, small community churches like this are, in my opinion, the heart of the Amen. body of Christ. Amen. There are a lot of, you know, these big, big name televangelical uh, churches, you know, televangelists and mega churches. I'm not going to say they're all bad because they're not. There are um, a lot of good pastors who love the Lord in these big churches. But you know what I do. There are more bad than good. That's and right. Out of out of the entire church. You know, you've got millions and millions and millions. The last uh, study I saw for America now said that 78% um, of Americans identified as Christians. Well, I think we can all know that 78% of America are not Christians. Mm -hmm. um, Most of this country is going to hell, friends. And if we right. do not do our part That's right. and evangelize our communities first, of course, then our towns, then our states, and then, of course, the country and the world, then we are going to have to stand before the Father one day. That's right. And give account because it's not just ministers it's not just preachers who are supposed to spread the gospel the great commission is to the entire church um, in Luke 9 1 Jesus sent out the 12 but then he gave the power and authority to another 70 another 70 Turn just one chapter over to Luke 10 in chapter 1. I mean, uh, verse 1. And after these things, the Lord appointed another 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. That's right. Amen. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. And over in verse 9, same, same chapter 10, and ver 10, 9, just, just over in verse 9, he says, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. You know, you may say, you know, not the same as the, the 12 but also the 70, that, that, that they weren't the same as the 12, that they didn't have the same authority, but that's not what the Bible says. No. You know, when we think about the apostles and the church getting started, we, we truly think that the church didn't get started until after Christ died and 
rose again and then ascended and then we think of Pentecost and the birth of the church. And that's true. But Jesus sent out 70 other than his disciples to teach as well. And in 1017, in verse 17, it says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils. Now, the, listen, this was not the twelve disciples. This was the seventy others. It says, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. He's talking spiritually here. Spiritual warfare. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written. That's right. Amen. Now, that can make people think. I know it made me think when I read it. Um, because Jesus hadn't gone and died yet, so I was wondering why were their names written in heaven? Because they had already believed on him. And the only way their names would have been written in heaven was if they believed on him. And we know because the Bible says it and that makes it so that they had to also believe after he died and rose again. Because the Bible says that you must believe in your heart but also confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You are to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, which they obviously did, but... It also says you have to believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. So That's we know right. that these 70 were, they, they believed because Jesus himself handpicked them. So if Jesus handpicked them, that believe that we know that he knew that they were going to be also great men to start the church. They were going to go out as well. And this is how the church was spread through the known world at this time. Think about this, guys. A handful of uh, Jewish men and women, and eventually a few Gentiles as well, uh, like Timothy was uh, half and half, but a handful of men and women turned the known world upside down. That's right. That's right. For Jesus Christ. A handful. But we've got 73% or what, however much it was of mm -hmm. America pro professing to be Christians. If just a fraction of that's true, it's way more than the handful that turned the world upside down for Jesus Christ after he rose again. You got to understand the old gods, the gods of Rome, like gods, had been worshipped for 2,000 years. And by the 4th century AD, the Christian faith was the national faith of Rome. They had gone from worshiping false gods to their national faith, their national uh, religion being that of Jesus Christ and Christianity. We have got, my point, if nothing else, if you don't hear anything else I say today, hear this. Friends, we have got to get back to that first century church state of mind. That's right. We've got to get back to that first century church Christianity. 
Yes. And we've got to turn the world upside down. That's right. We have to. If we don't, then we definitely cannot sit back and complain, well, the world's right. going to pot. That's right. That's right. And after the 70, he then gave the Great Commission to the whole church. He told the 12, he told the 70, now he's going to tell the whole church. Turning your Bibles to Mark 16, verse 16. When Jesus tells the whole church, he adds this after the most important, which is to win the lost. He adds this. He says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. That's right. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. He gave the 12 and the 70 the power of his name. <coughs> and now he gives the whole church the power of his name. Now, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes. But uh, if the Lord gives me something to say, I'm sorry I have to say it or else I have to answer. That's right. I do not in any way believe that you have to be able to speak in tongues or cast out devils. If you haven't done one of these things, that you are not saved because that's not what the Bible says. That's right. But you do have the power to do that. If you have Jesus Christ in you, you have the power to cast out demons, heal the sick, and... I think one of the biggest problems with the church today is they have lost all belief in the supernatural, lost all belief in the power and authority that they have in God. And a lot of this is due to the teachings that uh, were brought in and adopted by the Roman Catholic Church and then others after the Reformation that the apostolic, the, the apostolic power that the first century church had died with them. Show it to me in the word of God. Now I know that there are plenty of people who claim to have this power that don't. That's right. But friends, power of God, I mean the, the word of God says that we have that power. Now what you have to understand is back what Jesus said to the 70. Remember what he said to the 70? This is important. He said to the 70 he said in verse 20 he said Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's right. In other words, that power to do these supernatural, miraculous things, that's not the most important thing, and that's not what we should rejoice in. We should rejoice because we have been born again Amen. and our names are written in heaven. Amen. And we should do as the angels do. The Bible Amen. says when uh, that the angels in heaven rejoice every time a uh, soul is one for Christ. Every time someone accepts Christ that heaven rejoices. We should do the same. That's, right. That's the main thing. That's what's important is rejoicing 
because our names are written in heaven. I know that spreading the gospel to the entire world seems like an impossible task. I know it does. Um, <clears throat> it seems impossible to me sometimes whenever I'm um, coming up to someone's house or talking to someone on the phone or <sighs> preaching at a church I've never preached at before. I, even though I know that I stand behind the pulpit or speak to that person with the authority that comes with the doctrine of Christ. I'm still human, so I fear and I get anxious. So it's natural for that to happen. But just because something seems impossible doesn't mean it's impossible. If you believe the word of God, and I do cover to cover, and if you are professing Christians, if you profess to be born again, then you too are supposed to believe the word of God from cover to cover. That's right. And the word of God says that we are the body of Christ. That's figuratively and literally. Jesus Christ ascended to heaven 40 days after his crucifixion. We are his hands, his feet, his mouth. How else will the sick be healed? How else will the gospel be taught? How else will missionaries go or places that haven't heard the gospel hear it unless the body of Christ heals, teaches, walks. That's right. We are the representation of Christ. Not some old gray-haired man sitting up on his throne in the Vatican in Rome. That's right. Amen. The church is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to end with this and after this we're going to pray but I want you to remember this as you go throughout your week because this is something that has recently humbled me. I've been so wrapped up in trying to get a church on its feet off the ground and finding a place to worship and worrying about my family and worrying about how I was going to, what I was going to talk about on each episode of my program each week. I literally forgot what was important. It's important to stand up here and teach the body of Christ. But if all we do is teach the body of Christ, then the body of Christ will not grow. The pews won't fill up, but way more important than that, heaven will fill up. That's right. And what humbled me was when I was praying and the Holy Spirit, God literally showed, said this to me. It came in my head and on my heart, and I heard it just as loud as if somebody beside me would have spoke it into my ear. It literally came to my head and to my heart, and that is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit teaches us all things and brings them to our minds. So, please, as you go throughout the week. There's no service tonight. You can relax, spend time with your family, whatever, what have you. And then we'll be coming back Wednesday and next Sunday, but throughout the week, look for the opportunity to share the gospel. Amen.
Um, if you see someone you don't know, uh, there are all kind of ways to strike up a conversation. You know, if, if um, you don't know how to start that conversation or you, you're you worried to say, do you, do you know Jesus? Because a lot of people um, aren't going to admit they don't believe in Jesus. You know, if you could strike up a conversation with somebody, ask them what they believe it takes to make it into heaven. And from there, see if God doesn't open the doors for you to share the gospel. And if you are obedient, see how much your lives will change and how much more the blessings from the Father will come to you. You know, we're, we're taught a lot that give and will be given back. Well, the same thing, if not way more, applies to the giving and the spreading of the gospel. Our life will be blessed way more abundantly if we will be obedient to the Father and spread the gospel to the world. watching live through Facebook or Periscope. I pray that each and every person that heard the sound of my voice, Father, I pray that you would open their ears. Lord, you say we have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. I pray that each of us will be obedient to your word. Thank you.